Hello and welcome to Deep Town Divers VR show, the show where we discuss tech, blockchain, AR, VR, and everything you might be interested in directly from VR from this studio. And I'm super excited today to have with me Robert Scoble, who accepted our invitation. Hello, Robert. Thank you for uh, being with us here today. And in case you don't know who Robert is, uh, he's a tech enthusiast, blogger. He wrote four books. The latest one is Infinite Retina. Uh, which came out this year recently and um, yeah we'll be discussing with Robert all things tech um, and I'm looking forward to the discussion today thank you for accepting the invitation thank you Thanks great for me on. so perhaps the best way to start would be um, since your book came out recently uh, maybe you can tell us a few words about your book and what led yeah. you to write the book what the book is about and uh, you know wh why people should uh, should buy the book if they didn't do it yet yeah. <laughs> I uh, wrote it with Irina Cronin and about a year and a half ago we started we were seeing a whole bunch of trends we were seeing robots being used in warehouses we were seeing uh, billions of dollars being invested by Apple and Facebook and Google and Microsoft and Magic Leap in, in these spatial computing devices, uh, you know, augmented reality headsets and whatnot. Anyways, we were seeing that, that there were seven industries that were radically going to change in the next decade due to these newer technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, 3D sensors and 3D uh, visualizations of the world and things in, in our world, uh, including VR, right? VR is a big part of the book. So, and this is a, a real thrill. This is like the beginning. You know, I just was sitting here like thinking that this was really the beginning of something really magical here. So congrats on to you and your team for building this. This is really amazing. Thank you. Thank you. But the book, uh, the book lays out seven industries that are going to radically change education, uh, retail, transportation, uh, entertainment and telecom, fintech, healthcare. I think I'm missing one there somewhere. <laughs> one another. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to remember all seven, but there's there's deep changes coming in in each, and we can go into any of the any of those like yep. retail or transportation. Transportation is really an interesting thing to me. I had the first. Uh, YouTube video of the Google self-driving car up. So, right, and now you have Model yeah. Three, right? You 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 own a Model oh, Three. Oh, I love my Model yeah, Three. Yeah, it's, I have it's, a Tesla. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, I had the first ride with uh, Elon Musk um, in the serial model number one Roadster. He gave me the the first ride that ever was given in a Tesla. Oh, really? Um, wow. Well, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I had a ride before his best friend did because uh, we were racing his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, and and uh, was fun. what what was your feeling that uh, at that time? Like, did you did you did you feel like that's the future at that moment? Did you know that this yeah. is the this is the thing? Uh, yeah, I wanted one. I just couldn't afford one. But you know, it took me a, uh, ten years before I could afford one. Um, you know, back then it. it a roadster just wasn't a good car for a family man. And yeah, yeah. I didn't have disposable income to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a car that was only a two seater car, right? The the original Tesla was a based on the the Lotus, which was a yeah, you know, a little tiny um, uh, sports car. And of course, back then, it didn't do it, it didn't have the big screen. It didn't have the uh, autopilot. It didn't have the cameras. It didn't do a lot of the things that a Model Three does today, for for a far lower price. Yeah, so, I mean, which shows what technology does, right? Technology always starts really expensive. It uh, it always starts uh, for for either the military or for the rich person, and it gets cheaper and cheaper over time. I, I remember. Um, Steve Wozniak uh, helped fund me in college and, and uh, gave me some money for the journalism department I was going to. And he showed me the uh, uh, first color printer in Silicon Valley, the uh, first dye sublimation color printer. <laughs> this was when Photoshop 1.0 shipped. And that printer was $45,000. Oh, wow. And he had a um, he was running it with a Mac 2 CI, which was 1989. And he, w he had a 400 megabyte, not gigabyte, megabyte RAM drive uh, to run Photoshop 1.0. And that cost $45,000, right? 
today your iPhone has way more RAM and, and uh, a color printer today for $70 is way better printer than that printer yep. was. So, Absolutely. Um, it shows over time, technology just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and more and more capable to, to where we are here today, right? My first video camera um, back in oh. the early 80s yeah. was, looked like that one, right? <laughs> exactly. But was in physical world. It wasn't in virtual. And had three tubes and cost $100,000. And now we're we have a virtual camera right yeah, yeah now we have a virtual studio with like six cameras rolling right yeah. now uh and uh yeah they cost zero zero dollars to run uh and, yep. and produce footage uh in, and in could 2K. do a lot more actually than my camera can could back then it was big and heavy right you know? yeah and and, 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 and so and moving it around and the printer you 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 saw which which year was it uh do you remember 89 1989 89 yeah. i was four years old amazing yeah. uh cool yeah um and uh, yeah, I, I had I remember I had like six years, six and a half years ago, almost seven years ago, I had a chance to to have a roaster signature number one twenty six um, for several months uh, and writing it. Yeah. And yeah, it didn't have all the goodness at that time, but it was an amazing car. Like the the feel of the road, the acceleration, and uh, it felt yeah. like that something will change. But of course, Model S changed everything uh, later it on, and it. It, it really showed it, how it, it show, actually Since you're an entrepreneur, you'll appreciate this. Elon's vision back then was to make transportation cheaper. And his sales pitch, even back 12, 13, 13 years ago, was the same sales pitch you get today, yeah. right? Uh, you know, uh, electric engines accelerate really fast. They're safer because they don't slip. So, he, you know... Um, if you get a like a top end Porsche and you step on the accelerator, it'll lose traction. Yeah, and can be quite dangerous to drive if you don't know how to handle that. Right? Um, I, I hung out with the Target uh, Indy racing team, and I said, "Could I actually get into this car and drive it?" And he said, "You would spin it instantly, because until you get used to dealing with that much torque and understanding how to keep it from slipping." Um, you'll be quite dangerous in a car like that. Absolutely. Right? Um, so, and that's not true in a Tesla. You can see his first uh, demo when we were racing Jason Calacanis with a Corvette was step on the accelerator full, you know, put it all the way to the floor and it went fast, but it never lost traction. Yeah. Right? And yeah. That, uh, that still is true today. My, my car does the exact same thing today. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm a happy owner of Model S for six years already. And uh, the car, it's still the same car. By the way, the battery capacity is like 93% or something. So it's like, you know, it didn't lose any. And I'm supercharging a lot. Um, and I have over, I don't know, 130,000 kilometers on it already. Happy kilometers, I must yeah. say. And the car has actually yeah. changed my life. Like it, it changed the way how I think about road trips. It changed the way what I do in the car, how I you know, drive, how much information I can actually um, take in while I'm driving because I can listen to podcasts, right? I can listen to blogs, to books, to anything. And because of autopilot, I can actually do that and think about those things rather than taking care all the time about the distance of the car here and there. So yeah, that, 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 uh, that thing uh, has definitely changed the car. And you're right, the, the, the sales speech is the same. Um, and he succeeded uh, in every step of the way, which is, uh, which is amazing. Uh, congratulations yeah, to, to Elon. The only thing that did change was back then, you know, 13 years ago, we didn't have any idea that we were going to get self-driving cars. Right. And the technology was, uh, God, this was 80, I'm sorry, 98. Um, it, it was right before Google bought the Stanford team and started doing uh, self-driving cars. And, and that was at that period of time, it was still science fiction to have a car yeah. that would drive itself with a computer. Yeah. And Google's car, I, I, you know, I took that video, I think in 99, I'm sorry, 2000, two, where are we? We're 2009, sorry. 
Uh, my it's 2020 still, still people <laughs> just it's for your information but in 2009 i took a video of a toyota um with a lidar on top i saw that video i saw that video i yeah. saw it yeah and i didn't even know what it was i i just thought it was a mapping car i didn't it, it was so futuristic to have a self-driving car that one was driving next to me on the freeway and i didn't recognize it was a self-driving car right it it was actually eight months later when the New York Times said Google is doing self-driving research that I looked back at my video that I had posted and said, shit, I had the first yeah. the first video of a self-driving car. But this was after Elon showed me the first Tesla, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, and, right. And so Elon didn't know about autopilot back then. And so that's that shows you even, you know, technology comes along and changes your uh, opinion of what you can do as a product. And, and I'm sure if you talk to the autopilot team today, they're not able to see what's going to come out in AI five years from now. Right? Yeah. It, the world is continuing to change at a pretty fast, Absolutely. fast rate. And you see this with a Tesla every, I mean, I got an update last week and I got an update this week. Right? Yeah. And I've got an update last month. Better. Yeah. 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 And and, and, and like, got better. I was I was I was charging driving to supercharge today. I have this preconditioning thing where it it prepares your battery and it works. It fastens my charging speed in a six year old car, okay, uh, by like three to four percent. It's a lot. Uh, and 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 and, and it, again, it's an old car uh, which uh, uh, which gets better uh, and better over time. So yeah, that's 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 amazing um, stuff. Um, Okay, yeah, just for, for people who don't know who I am and uh, gets into the why I did the book, I grew up in Silicon Valley. My dad built military satellites, right, uh, for Lockheed nice. for 25 years and was electrical engineer. And he, after college, he moved us to Cupertino in 1971. And if you know your history, Apple hadn't even been born then yet, right? So um, I, was a, I grew up a mile from where Apple started. And so I got to see Apple grow from one little building to now being the biggest, most profitable company in the world. And um, uh, I know, you know, the, the founders, and I've been to some, many of the press conferences and stuff like that over time. So I, I got to study that company at a deep level. One of my great friends, Andy Grignan, actually worked for Steve Jobs for 11 years. And so, you know, my next door neighbor works for Apple in QA. And, nice. And so the, the, I'm in uh, Silicon Valley. I'm in, uh, on the real farm. And this Silicon Valley is a former farm, right? And um, I I can walk to Netflix uh, from where I am. So. So you're you're you are yeah yeah you you are directly yeah. uh, uh, in inside the the tech stuff. And and what 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 led you? How did you maybe progress in that? So okay, you saw Apple coming. I, uh, what were your like? My dad how did you got get me into an Apple. T my dad got me an Apple II when, when we were thir when I was thirteen years old, in 1977, and my school I was going to high junior high in Cupertino, and they bought their first computers, and I was in the room when they when they unboxed them. Um, nice. And um, that got me to fall in love with new things, and got me to see that Apple was going to be a company that would change my life. I had no idea how, because back then an Apple II really didn't do anything. I mean, it, this world does a lot more than an Apple II. <laughs> yes. <laughs> an Apple II. We hope Apple so. Apple <laughs> the first one it had a tape drive, and you could load, I think, three different applications, and you could load basic. And then you would have to learn how to program um, uh, to build something new, yeah. right? Now, I never really took to programming. I, I wish I'd had, because if I had, I, I would have uh, gone on a different path through this world. But I always hung out with the people who did take to programming, and I would be like the tester or the user or, or um, you know, just enjoy being around them. And that continued to high school. Uh, I took the 1980s and sold uh, consumer electronics, which made me learn about a whole range of new things. Um, cameras. I sold the first autofocus camera in Silicon Valley. Oh, wow. Uh, a Minolta Maxim, a DSL, uh, an SLR. This was before the D, right? Yeah. This was an SLR yeah. with autofocus. 
Nice. And it let me understand how people approach new t new things and new technologies. Um, and uh, that leads straight into the book, right? Uh, understanding how people are going to look at glasses and look at autonomous cars and look at uh, robots uh, in their lives. Okay. All right. So since we're already at Apple and discussing, you know, the, the past, uh, let's let's uh, stick to Apple for a little bit um, and, and talk yeah. about all the rumors and uh, and uh, you know all those leaks coming out right now about um, Apple Glass. So, what I what are your thoughts about Apple Glass and in terms of how do you think this will change the the future in the midterm um, and in yeah. the long term? Um, are you hyped for that or are you skeptical? I, what are your thoughts? Oh, I I think Apple is the one to really bring augmented reality reality to normal people. And there's a whole re bunch of reasons for that. They have the only retail stores that really can show people new technology and let them try it out. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you go through a paradigm shift, and, and this is a true paradigm shift of computing, moving from looking at rectangles of glass, right, to living in this kind of 3D world, right? Virtual yep. reality is a paradigm shift, but augmented reality lets you do this kind of thing while walking around or moving around the world. To go through that, this is a very, this is a paradigm shift that's resisted by people because it's on your face, right? And and putting devices on your face is, is a really hard thing. I mean, I, I've had people over at the house and I'll be playing some fun game like Pistol Whip or, or Beat Saber or something like that. And, um, and I say to the people watching me, this is fun, try it out. And they resist it. Hmm. They don't want to try it. Mm -hmm. They think it will make them look weird. And it also th makes them think that they'll separate themselves from, from the people. From the real, right. So th that's sort of where Apple, I think, is starting. Apple's looking at these technologies and, uh, and doing a lot of human factor research. I hear they're doing more human factor research on the glasses than they've ever done on any product combined. Nice. Right? Before. And that sort of fits the kind of investment that you have to make to, to get there. When you move from holding a phone in your, in your, in your hand to wearing something on your face in the shopping mall or while driving yeah, or yeah. while sitting in a Starbucks or something like that. You you feel very differently about the technology than you did with a, a, a phone, right? And so Apple has the retail store. They have the money to market it. They, they have the money to build it and, and the, the global reach. I mean, parts and the brand. Of it are being built in Israel. Parts are being built in China. Parts are being built in Cupertino, right? They have a global team now. They have the brand that means something to a lot of people. Um, uh, they have the relationships with the content people. So they'll have, you know, books, news, mu music, movies, you know, all that. And, and millions of apps that will get converted into this augmented right. reality thing once the thing comes out. So you start, just start there. I, I, nobody else has all the, those ingredients, right? If you call this making a meal, and now your left hand is disappearing. Yeah, no, I'm a <laughs> virtual reality, friends. <laughs> Magic, <laughs> right? And this this right. shows sort of the, the early nature of this, right? It's still yeah, of a course. little imperfect. It still has some glitches. This is so much better than w when you were young. Did you ever play with See You, See Me? Um, uh, my no. friends and I, you know, when we got modems, we started playing with this video thing called See You, See Me, where we would get a a 120 by, you know, 160 by 120 pixel little video window that maybe gets one frame a second. <laughs> <video>. uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and it was so fun because you could actually see somebody in, 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 across the world. Now we're having, you know, you're, where are you right now? You're I'm in, in Prague. Prague we're right? in Prague, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm in Campbell, California. And, and I feel like you're, you're here, here honestly. This is, yeah, exactly. I feel like I'm sitting right yeah, next to you. It's it's crazy. My my son's learning to program, and his teacher lives in New Zealand. And I can't tell that he's not next door. 
Yeah. All right, yeah, it's uh, it's, a, it's he has a weird accent. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to New so, Zealand. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. And my first my first game was Ultima Online, and still it was immersive. I was running from Richard Garrett. I was running in this world, and everyone were there connected, and we didn't have audio, but we had chat, uh, which at that time was great. Right now we are of course special audio. I know that you are here. Sound is coming, but yeah, it yeah. it was it was a lot of fun. So Apple, uh, in terms of my thoughts on Apple Glass, I think. Um, I'm not a big fan of Apple because of they got lazy, I think, for the iPhone. So they, they used to be great and I used to have iPhone and I loved it. But then during the time, they just got really, uh, you know, lazy, in my opinion, and, and other manufacturers really overtook them, like Samsung, for example, with their amazing phones and stuff. So there I was not a fan. But in terms of Apple Glass, I also believe that they are the only company in the world right now which can actually make this thing happen. And the yeah. only the only kind of downside of this I see is that normally Apple tries to never lead the, the market, at least be, uh, without Steve Jobs, I'd say. So they always follow. Yeah. But now they would be, if they would introduce this Even this with year. Even Steve Jobs, they never led. Yeah. And true, people true. don't understand that, right? They, they were not first in phones. Even go back to the Apple II, they were not the first personal computer. Yeah. There were other personal computers that were on the market before Apple came. He just did it Apple right. II. Yeah. Well, they did it much. They added some style to it. He had a, a case that was designed that was really beautiful. And he it was designed uh, a device so that you could hook a, a normal color TV up to it. And that... Uh, in the day, right, that was a big deal because monitors were so expensive right. back in 1977, yeah. right? And they were usually black and white, and they were big. And so if you could hook the thing up to your family TV, that was a big a big deal. Yeah, so the winner, those yeah. were breakthroughs there uh, that separate the, separated them from the other personal computers. Plus, they had color which let uh, Apple have video games that would be in color, you know, and, and that was a big deal for, for my generation growing up. We would play video games on, on the Apple II, and there was a bunch more Apple, Apple II video games back in those days than, than uh, uh, on other personal yep. computers. But this, the story is Apple always comes in late. Well, it is late to this new world, right? It's... It, it's not playing in VR. Other people are in VR, and it's not playing in AR. There's there's been plenty of other companies. M Microsoft has Hololens. Apple um, Magic Leap has ML2, and there's a whole range of glasses, some of which have already disappeared off the market. And that's why Apple waits. Apple has and and like you said, Apple gets boring because Apple now is a big company. It's yeah. not a it's not a real uh, push the technology kind of company right now although i think with the glasses you're going to see Might some change. surprising yeah. things okay well i i think what what apple does is they is they look at what the technology is on the table and they'll make it um really interesting for a consumer and and they have the, steve jobs used to tell his teams the, the pioneers get the arrows in their backs and then somebody walks up behind them and takes the trail over, right? And that's gonna be true here. Magic Leap did some amazing work. M Microsoft HoloLens is amazing. I have yeah, one. It's, yeah, it's, HoloLens is great. It's absolutely amazing to see things coming out of your walls and seeing virtual holograms on your floor or on your coffee table or right? even unreal it's amazing they're pushing yes. the limit unreal, as well unreal well, now is is an example of technology my hololens cost twenty five hundred dollars and a new one costs thirty five hundred dollars and real is going to be five hundred dollars exactly. and it's a lot smaller and but it still has some f deep flaws right it still has a cord to a com to a cell phone uh, it, cords will not work for consumers sorry let me just, you know, consumer. Do you, do you think it's like this? Cord. But Apple Glass will have a cord yeah. to the phone, right? No. no. No? It will be standalone. No. Wireless. 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 They, is that they, confirmed? They, they, <laughs> can, can, um, it is from, from my source on the Apple team. They That's why they did the ultra low bandwidth, uh, ultra wide bandwidth uh, chip. That's oh, in the current okay. IPhone, okay. Which hasn't yet been used for anything. Nobody has used that yet. 
that was put there for the glasses so that they could uh, stream uh, large amounts of information to another device nearby, right? Well, that's for the glasses and a few other things. They're going to have tags and some other things that can right. communicate with that ultra wideband and maybe a new TV as well. So you can stream video back and forth between devices. But that, that's an example of what Apple does. Apple, I mean, look at the headphones. I had Sony, I'm sorry, I had um, Pioneer Ray's headphones um, four years, three years ago, three, five, three years ago that had six uh, microphones in them, had better noise canceling even than the AirPods do today. Yeah. Um, but they have a cord, right? And Apple does, they don't do um, traditional customer research because I, when I in interviewed the Ford CEO several years ago, they do a lot of focus groups and they really understand their customers really well, right? Apple doesn't like that kind of research because it doesn't lead to, to new understandings, right? But they do understand and they do understand what really pisses people off about a product or what they really want in a product. And people, every time they saw my Pioneer headphones, they were like, I hate the cord, right? I, I heard that an anecdotally just by showing it to a few dozen people, right? And so Micros, uh, Apple and, my, and all these companies can hear that kind of feedback by showing it to hundreds, thousands of people in their R&D labs, right? And so they would have seen the same kind of feedback. And what did AirPods do? It got rid of the cord and did it better than anybody else did it. So now when you open the product up for the first time, it automatically connects to your phone, right? And Apple's ecosystem, that's what Apple does. Apple makes using their ecosystem really, really nice. And it's not always the bleeding edge technology. I mean, truth be told, if you have an Nreal, you probably have 70% or maybe even 90% of the technology that'll be in the Apple glasses, right? But Apple will make it work for normal people and work without a cord and work when you put it on, it really understands you at some level, right? And and uh, that's what Apple does. And um, no, and no, and now your you hand is uh, is off. <laughs> oh, right, you're back. Oh, sorry. Um, it's it's it's. I must I must say, cause I heard for I think John Posser he uh, he uh, published leaks on on glass, and he said it would be wired yeah. and um, unreal, unreal. They are wired to your phone. I think yeah. like making it wireless will bring a tons of problem for Apple. I, I'm skeptical to, to, uh, to, to, to see that if, if they are announcing it this year and... and, um, and uh, They're not going to announce this year. The, okay. These things are not going to be announced. So here's the problem with Apple. There's many, many teams working on many, many different products there. I hear they have something like 19 different prototypes being worked on, right? Wow. And in glasses, you one mean. team leaks in glasses. One team leaks one thing, and we don't know how accurate it is at the end of the day. I, you know, when I worked at Microsoft, and my brother-in-law worked for Steve Jobs, uh -huh. and every few months he would come home and say, "Oh, Steve killed the phone project." This was back in 2005, before the iPhone came out. Right. Oh, Steve killed the phone project. And then six months later, I. Oh, Steve started the phone project back up. <laughs> you, know, you would hear these rumors. You knew something was coming because you just heard these things, right, from different places. But you'd never really you knew don't know. Yeah. what was going to be great. And, and same thing with the glasses. Just because I know they're going to have a lightweight pair of glasses with a 3D sensor, a LiDAR, uh, that, that looks pretty nice, it, it won't have a cord. There's no fucking way they have a cord. Right. Okay. It'll be we have a it'll be here. tethered. It, now, processor. I don't think said there's a cord. I think he said there we're tethered to the phone. That means a wireless tether. You have to have your phone nearby you, probably within sight. Of oh, you, right. The the new Wi-Fi and the new uh, ultra wideband uh, require for the really good connectivity. You require your antennas on your device to be able to see that device. Right. Okay. So you can't have it in another room and have it work right it has to be close to you which is yeah, how 
How many times a day does your phone ever get more than three feet away from you? Never. 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 <laughs> <laughs> because every time it does, my watch tells me I'm too far away. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I need to yeah, come yeah. back. <laughs> my, mine is like three feet that way right now, right? So, you know, it's it's always within a few feet of you, usually, with some exceptions, right? So. Yeah. Okay. You, you start you start thinking about that, but but what what we can't know, even with all the rumors, and there's rumors on Bloomberg that there's two devices. One will do AR and VR, and be more useful in your home hmm. or in an office. I I hear from other people at Apple, no, that one's not going to get to market. That they're going to go with just glasses. That that they're going to let the VR industry go with, with uh, Oculus Quest or Sony PlayStation. Um, but w we don't know, right? It, it, Tim Cook might might decide to ship that thing, right? Okay. It, it yeah. might get to the, to the place where it ships. The other thing, re remember the original um, iPod. How long did it take the iPod to go from an idea on a whiteboard to a product in a store? Hmm. I don't know. Eight eight months. Oh, really? Right? Wow. And eight okay. months. So it it shows how fast a product can go from an idea to a pro to a, a thing in the store. So we know a product is probably going to come in twenty twenty one with the uh, when they launch the I, the I, iPhone in October or September, right next year. It might okay. not come until 2022. Right. right? So, so they have still. But, so we, we don't really know when it's going to come. But, but you can see the signs in the software. You can see right. the signs in what they're doing, that they're taking you down a journey and they're taking you toward glasses someday. Right. right? Yeah. So yeah. even if it's 2023, it's coming someday. And they, and they have leaked stories about, oh, there's a pair coming in 2022 and a pair coming in 2023. So even if they kill the pair in 2022, it's 2023. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it makes sense. It, yeah. it, it can change, but you know, the market is changing. Uh, COVID is changing our expectations of what we want to do with each other. Right. So all of a sudden VR is becoming more interesting than AR is because I can't go to the shopping mall right now and yep. I can't go to movie theaters and I can't go to the sporting events right now. Now, will that be true in a year? Yeah, well, we could argue about that, right? But many people but become the product a little bit, designers. Yeah, yeah they, they, the product designers inside these companies are paying attention to that too, and are shifting strategies. So even if you think you know what Apple's going to do, you really don't know until they launch. True. And I and I love rumors. I love Apple. I I read all the rumors. I eat it up, right? And you know, clearly they're doing something. Clearly it's going to be interesting. Even then, I don't know what the software is going to do. And the software is where all the magic is. Right? True. Just, just because I know what an Oculus Quest looks like or an Oculus Rift doesn't no mean I know what uh, Somnium Space does, right? Yeah. And there will be <clears throat> new, many new things coming in the glasses because entrepreneurs like you will get an early look. They go, oh, I'm going to build a whole company on that and start building on it. And then six months later, you come out and that's. Oh, we have really we, we want to have a AR, AR, AR uh, uh, want to have a AR support here as well, like to let people with AR have a glimpse of the environment and be inside their mind, like hear you and talk to you, yeah. but actually not be in VR um, because, you know, they cannot or uh, they don't have VR. So that's that's definitely an interesting an interesting uh, right. market uh, to, to explore. It and this, and this is where Apple, I think Apple's human factors and, and what I've sensed too. VR has some real significant problems, right? I can't wear this VR headset and walk through a shopping mall, right? It's, it, I, I you can, but it wouldn't be good. <laughs> it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be smart. You would get an accent. You, you would trip and fall. You look like a dork, right? Um, there, there's all sorts of problems with using VR in the real world, right? And so you start thinking about, oh, how would augmented reality glasses solve some of those problems and let like an audience member sit in a Starbucks and work on his 
Excel spreadsheets or whatever, you know, Google spreadsheets or whatever, while watching this too. Yeah. Right. And having this mixed media re exactly and interacting, and be able to see the real, and be able to see the, the person sitting, at, you know, across from them in a real Starbucks. That would be really amazing. Here we're separated from the real world, and and Apple doesn't like VR internally for that reason, for a whole lot of reasons. It's unsafe in a lot of reasons. You, you're never going to wear a VR headset in a subway. Why? Because somebody's going to rip off your two thousand dollar MacBook, <laughs> 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 and you can't and you can't see them because. <laughs> I'm looking at you in virtual reality and I can't see the real world right now, right? Yeah, we cannot, and, you could even not hear it. If I'm going to yeah. hit somebody with my hand, right? Yeah. I, I, my dad was hit by my kid because uh, he was, he, my dad didn't know the rules of, of VR. You know, stuff, he yeah. didn't know that there was somebody playing VR and going to do something weird in Beat Saber, right? And, and hit him. So Apple knows that there's all these problems that, AR will solve at some level. VR, on the other hand, gives you this presence and this immersion. Yeah, amazing. I mean, look at this beautiful world, right? This is going to be hard to do in, VR, in AR for a while because the optics just aren't there. The optics are starting to come, though. Um, Loomis from Israel just showed me new optics, which give a, a wide field of view, mm -hmm. really bright image on top of the real world. So you're starting to get some of the advantages that VR has in a small form factor, a glasses form factor. Okay. Right. So again, the technology is starting to come along. And if you give me enough years, you know, five years, those glasses are going to be pretty good. 10 years, they're going to be really Yeah, we'll be, every, yeah, we'll and be that's, wearing it everywhere. Yeah. And that's why Apple and Facebook are in this war against each other. They're spending billions of dollars each trying to get to this next paradigm because they know that if people switch from computing in a phone to computing on their face, that everything changes because Facebook of the future has to look like this. In fact, we've talked about this in previous times, right? Yeah. That if I'm living in an AR or VR world, I'm not looking at Instagram anymore. I'm looking at Instagram in just, just well, a second. I'm looking at photos in a 3D space. Uh, okay, since we are at Facebook and Apple a little bit, so what is your what is your thought on Facebook and its future? I mean, Apple most probably is going to AR. Facebook is battling over VR. It's clear, I think, to Mark that Facebook and at its form factor will not survive another five years maybe or seven years yeah. uh, people are getting uh, you know it's getting boring and uh, they're just it's getting old for people what are your thoughts on it, it's on not just getting boring i back to this paradigm shift we're moving our computing from flat screens to this 3d world right and when paradigm shifts happen big companies go away right When, when the Macintosh came along, WordPerfect and Borland were the big companies of the day, and they're gone now, right? And this will be true, and Mark knows this very deeply. If you go to Facebook's headquarters in, in Menlo Park, he, the, and you look at the Facebook sign in front of the building, the main headquarters, the back of the sign is a Sun Microsystems sign, and he left the Sun Microsystems ah, sign nice. there as a reminder yeah. to his employees that when paradigm shifts come, the company can go away. Yeah. Even a big, important company like Facebook can go away, right? And you start thinking about a world where everybody is wearing glasses they're not going to be looking at Instagram the way that they were, are today, right? And, and so I look at the paradigm shifts because paradigm shifts are where humans reevaluate all of their brands and all of their usage patterns, right? Um, and big companies can be formed with, with paradigm shifts and big companies can go away. So um, I think that's what's driving Mark is he – He knows a paradigm shift is coming. He he agrees. He sees that this is happening. Yeah, right? yeah. That VR it, it was happening. He had an early look at it at Stanford University and a few other places, and that's why he bought Oculus. But now he's aiming at glasses, 
and he's coming at it from a very different point of view than Apple is. Apple is going to come, probably their first product will be glasses, will be eyeglasses, right? With some augmented reality and some yeah. some conveniences, some utility added on. Heads up display, yeah. Healthcare and yeah, stuff yeah. like that, right? And Apple will come from that yeah. direction. <clears throat> Facebook is coming from Oculus Rift, Oculus, you know, the, the VR, and they're going to go toward glasses from a bigger uh, VR device. And they also have a very different DNA of the company, right? A Apple is a very fashion company, a very um, device oriented company. F Facebook doesn't really know how to build devices. Although um, I have a several of their um, uh, quests. Uh, Cameras. Oh, cameras. Uh, ah, cameras. Um, right, right, right. Not, not, the, not very known cameras from the, the home. portals. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. This is how, even in my head, I have three of these things, and the brand, the brand hasn't yet stuck in that they're good at this yet. But they show some real genius with this portal camera that's in my house. Um, it's better than an uh, Amazon uh, Echo device, for instance. And it's hooked into the social graph of Facebook. And that's where they're headed. I, uh, a friend of mine uh, told me about the um, strategy document that Facebook has mm -hmm. uh, laying out a world where everybody is wearing glasses. And a lot of the things that they lay out in that strategy document are things where you're going to be playing or working with other people. And the foundation of that is the social graph. And, and Facebook does understand how people interact with each other pretty mm -hmm. deeply. Whether they're good at it or not, we can have an argument, but they're the leader in it, right? And, and they have a lot of expertise in, in the social graph. And they have a lot of lock-in. And this Facebook portal shows that all of my friends are on Facebook. So, yeah, I can use Zoom but the Facebook portal is better at using, at having conversations with my friends. So right. the camera zooms in, which Zoom doesn't. It's funny that Zoom has Zoom in the name, but it doesn't have <laughs> a camera, right? Okay. <laughs> you know, and, and it shows how little things can make a product that's pretty interesting. It's just um, Facebook doesn't have the brand or the supply chain to get a lot of these things done, and they don't have the distribution channel the retail channel that Apple does. So you start looking at these two companies and they're coming at the same product. You know, 10 years from now, we're all wearing a pair of glasses that does a lot of VR and a lot of AR, a lot of amazing stuff. Do but you think it will be all in one or there will be different devices all the time? For uh, 10 years from now, I think it's all in one. I all think in one. We wear oh. one device. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think you have. I think you have the ability to tell God in the sky, hey, I need to see the real world, and, uh, and part of the VR world disappears and the r real world shows up, right? Um, mixed reality, we, we call this mixed reality, right? right. I, um, I, I think I, in, in 10 years, you're gonna have enough GPU on a mobile device to have really amazing video games and really amazing virtual worlds. You know, uh, saw me in space in 10 years on a, a pair of glasses, it's gonna look badass. Right. Yeah, I think compared to today. I, th I think uh, I believe that one day we will wear one one pair of glasses to have computing power. I still think that for full VR potential um, to have, you know, on a PC, you will always have a better and a more immersive experience. It's just it's just physics. And, and, and it's hard right now. It's hard to to to, let's say, imagine um, that full computing power going into mobiles, even though mobile phones are getting faster and we have 5G, maybe all of that conversion and cloud computing and just streaming you the, yeah. the content with a low but latency, see, can, that's the future. Here's where Facebook is already dreaming of a 5G world. Instead of trying to put the GPU in your phone or on your glasses, They'll do they're going to put big GPUs up in the cloud yeah. or on a telephone pole near your house. Right, uh, where the 5G radios, yep. the, the antennas are, and 5G. I've I've been in labs where where the high end of 5G, <laughs> if you're in the perfect situation, you get 25 gigabits per second. Yeah, that's data, insane. That's insane. Right? Yeah. It's a totally insane amount yeah. of data, and you get two millisecond latency to the cell tower. 
right? Yeah. Which is also insane. My, my fiber line gives me five if I'm jacked right into my fiber line, right? So that's just a, an amazing low latency. Humans can't tell latency under 30, right? Yeah. So, I mean, how much latency are we getting here with moving our hands back uh, and forth? I here think it's run r- r- about 50, 60 milliseconds. And it 50, feels perfectly and, fine. And, and We're fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so two milliseconds is like no latency. Yeah, it's right? no latency, it, exactly. In fact, the industry calls it zero latency, Yeah. right? Um, latency is the amount of time it takes a packet to go from m- my glasses to a cell tower, right? Yeah. Now, the cell tower is still... How many devices are our packets going through on the way to Prague and back? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hundreds, you know? Yeah. And Speed of Light is working in our, uh, in, you know, Speed of Light is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, spe- yes, that's, that's a quote of well, this uh, Prague, show. Speed of Light, then <laughs> I mean, if I fly to Prague, it takes 12 hours, right? So uh, my packets True. get to you in, in 80 milliseconds. That's great. True. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. And I was, I was uh, just, just a side note, I was, I was thinking recently, um, and I had those thoughts several times, and um, one of one of uh, one of friends, uh, he he's working, uh, and maybe you'll show it on uh, you'll, you'll see it on YouTube soon. Um, like it made me think that actually, like you know, we always dream about time machines and and teleportation in real life, right? Um, and it made me think maybe with VR, um, we will invent those things differently in different way, and we will think yeah. about them differently rather than physically transforming ourselves and t- transporting ourselves somewhere, we might be able to do this, but in a, in a different way. It will feel the same, yeah. it will be the same, but it will be a different thing. And that's like part of what we do here in Somnium is like live forever mode. Basically, we, we will be recording everyone on their land parcels if they wish, and they will be paying us for that. Yeah. And then we'll be using AI to transform you back into your avatar. And if you're not here, your avatar will be you walking and talking here with other people. That's that's kind of a time machine already by itself. Like you can uh, really talk to people, right? It it I uh, you know I I don't want to go back to physical events, and I've been to a lot of physical me, events. Yeah, I, me too. I was at me twenty five too. South by Southwest. I was. Oh wow. A lot of CESs, pr- more than twenty, right? Nice. I don't even know how many, and, and <laughs> Comdexes before that that are out of business and. It, photo marketing shows. I mean, I've been to Vegas so many times. I'm sick of Vegas, right? Um, You can see that this kind of world is going to bring, you know, the ability to go to a a large scale event pretty soon. Yeah. Maybe not today, maybe with a few hundred people today. I mean, I've I've been going to a lot of music events and like the wave and and other VR things and, and really playing around. And you, you you can see, okay, it works for a, a few dozen people in one space. It doesn't work for 10,000 people in one space. You have to shard the, the rooms and have mirror rooms and, and nobody can have, have the same common experience. It's, that's the one thing that I haven't seen the technology yet be able to do. I, when you go to a music festival, you know, like uh, Coachella, and you're in a field with 40,000 other people. Um, yeah, you're not in a, interacting with all 40,000 people. But so you, you feel them. Thinking about, okay, but you feel them. Yeah. And you're actually part of a human organism, particularly if you're pressed. Uh, you know, I, I saw the glitch mob at uh, Coachella and, and the pressure to get into the Sahara tent where th- they were playing was extraordinary. And, and so you were pressed together and 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 when everybody was jumping the whole thing moved like you jumped even if you didn't jump because everybody just lifted you up it was nice it's an experience you can't have in vr right so so in our book we talk about this gap between analog and digital there there is a gap neil young took me into a studio and let me listen to his analog masters of harvest moon famous rock and roll singer right and then we listened to it in digital, and there was a little gap. Even even at high resolution, there was a gap. But yet we don't. Li- none of us listen to music in analog anymore, unless you have a record player with a vinyl record player and a stereo system. And even then, 
even if you had that, you don't listen to that in your Tesla because it doesn't work in a te you know while driving around. So we listen to Spotify in the Tesla. And so digital brings us many capabilities that analog can't. Yeah. And um, at Coachella, I was actually playing with these augmented reality headphones that, uh, from a company that's gone already called Doppler. And oh, they were two hundred dollar headphones. Yeah, yeah, um, they were really interesting headphones because they they were like AirPods. In fact, AirPods are starting to get some of the capabilities that Doppler had four years ago, right? But these headphones um, block the analog from getting to your head, like like an AirPod does, and they had a microphone like the AirPod did, and they had processing like the AirPod did. Do you know the AirPod has more computing power than an iPhone four did? No, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But why they sound so badly? <laughs> the microphone Actually, somehow. Actually, the new ones sound the the new ones sound pretty good. I I mean, I have Sony's and Pioneers, and I I love headphones, right? And I can't afford a two thousand dollar pair of headphones, so I'll buy anything under five hundred dollars. You right? should try Nura phones. Like, if you didn't try Nura phones uh, yet, you're you're like the second one. You yeah. should do it because I, I sorry for that, but I have I have. Back them on Kickstarter without zero expectations. I just thought, okay, cool idea. What they do is they analyze your hearing, particularly to you. So they know that your ear needs to listen to more bass. They need to push more, you know, the mid ones and stuff. So they analyze your hearing in real time. It takes yeah. a minute or two. And then they play you the music. Oh, my God. What I do is I have a subscription. And on how much a, are they? Uh, 400 something. Um, and they are amazing. And again, they got also software bits. So suddenly I got like noise canceling stuff and, you know, all this kind of via software update for them. And yeah. the thing is, when you hear, and they change profiles, so I can have like my, my profile and then I can switch to my wife's profile, for example. But when I switch to my wife's profile, it sounds crazy bad because it's tailored for her ears and this is still for my so what i do is i couple this with a subscription for high res music um uh, i forgot the name of the of that service yeah and then i listen De to teaser is it teaser or is it uh uh title title or something like this title it is uh in yeah, yeah. my case and, yeah, yeah. Title. and title yeah and and i must say yeah. i have every time so i change the way how i listen to music i don't listen to music occasionally i just take 20 minutes a day of my time in the evening and I sit down, I fire up my phone, I put my headphones on, and I just listen to the songs. And I had to re-listen all the songs which I listened before and I loved, and it gave me goosebumps. Like it, and I'm not exaggerating. It, it some songs almost made me cry. Like I, I, I didn't hear sounds all before right. which I heard in those headphones, yeah. and I was like, uh, "Wow, this is this is a new frontier." And I have to really recommend. Like if you didn't try them, try them out. This is amazing. I guarantee okay. you will love it. Uh, it it's a great, okay. they're great headphones. And they're over a year or in? in they're year? over the year. They have in ear yeah. buds as well. Um, and I'm yeah. absolutely sure they sound as well perfect uh, as the earbuds can sound, I think. Uh, but I have over the years, so they block your, uh, they completely 100% noise canceling stuff. And it's amazing. It's just simply yeah. so cool. Um, I cannot stress yeah. it more. So props no, that's to. Cool. To Nura, to Nura team uh, for doing that. Um, All right, so back to the headphones. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, these augmented reality headphones. So I'm standing at Coachella, right, which is a music festival with 100,000 people and $2 million worth of audio gear right in front of you, right? <laughs> and you take these $250 headphones and you put them in and it makes that sound better, right? Because it's augmenting the real world. Right. It, it makes the real world sound better. You can turn up the bass, like you said, you can adjust it, you can change the processing. So you can put Skrillex into a small church, you can get rid of uh, crowd noise, you can do all sorts of fun things. Awesome. And what was weird was you take them out, and then the real world sounds better. And you put oh. them in and the, and the headphones sound better. It, it sounds better both ways. And I did that hundreds of times. Like, like, because it's a mind fuck, right? It's like, how does it sound better both ways? Why does your human mind like augmented and it likes analog? And and it's like, that's weird. Why? And and Neil Young explained why. Because the human brain likes the smooth wave of analog, right? If you go to a beautiful mm. national park 
you feel better because you're seeing the, the real world in smooth analog wave. Even seeing a fireworks show in analog is much more beautiful than watching it on a TV screen, even a 4K TV, right? Or yeah. an 8K TV. It still doesn't look the same. It doesn't give you the same feeling. I, I watched uh, Hamilton yesterday, the the play, right? And it's not, it, it's it's pretty cool. It's amazing, right? It's an amazing show. But seeing it in the play was even better in some ways because of this analog, the, the human right. mind likes analog. Right. But the human mind, can, uh, uh, we can't distribute analog very well. We don't have the, this is not analog. You're digital. Yeah. In fact, you're ultra digital. 100% right? digital. Yeah. <laughs> and this shows the advantage of digital. We can sit together, have a conversation like we, like you're sitting in my house, right? And yet you're in Prague and I didn't need to fly to come to your house to have this conversation, right? So digital has a huge advantage over analog in distribution and in terms of new features, in terms of new experiences, new capabilities, but analog still wins at some things. And we're going to be chasing analog for a long time. We're going to try to get these avatars to look more and more and more analog. I mean, you made me a, uh, uh, you know, a, a scan and stuff like that, and it looks pretty good. But in ten years, this is going to look like you yeah, know, you'll, you'll be you TV, exactly, right? and I'll be I'll be myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there'll probably be uh, several three D sensors looking at me, you know, watching me and transmitting that over the air. So yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. It, what I am doing is studying the difference between analog and digital. And like, I went to see Ma Marshmallow at Coachella, right? And mm -hmm. there was 10,000 people there seeing him perform. And it was very enjoyable because you had a hundred LED screens around you. You had a badass sound system. You had 10,000 people and it was all dancing. Yet when he performed that on Fortnite, he had 24 million people, yeah. right? Yeah. And that shows you the advantage of digital. You can have large numbers of people participating. Now, they like back to what we were talking about, they're not all sharing the exact same experience. That's what we try some to solve in, here as well in some new. Yeah, but but you can't have 10,000 people no, in this room. No, right? no. We can have a right. 600, so, 700 people in, in, in a, in a, in a so huge amphitheater. You could have a mirror experience across the way and have 100 people there and 100 people there and 100 people there and 100 people there. And and that's, it'll be interesting to see how you solve uh, the scale problems here because we started already. I, I can, yeah, I can see that people are going to want to have mass events in, in a world like this, right? You, you, you want to have a music event. I mean, music events in, in VR are quite enjoyable uh, because you can be in your house. Um, you, you know, you, you don't have to travel, you don't have to pay very much if at all and um, you can have drugs visual drugs right that yeah. in in the way they actually uh, give you a little pill and then you yeah it changes it your vision yeah it changes your ex experience right and so um there's a lot of advantages to digital and i think i think it's going to be interesting to watch people like you really um, build a new world that takes advantage of the digital and closes the gap between digital and analog as much as possible. We, we try, right? We, we, we went completely different path here. We, we, from what others yeah. are doing at the moment, we said, okay, we will not chart people at all. Uh, we, we work on a system in our own server architecture where we put all people in the same instance and the world around us is digital but it has a lot of analog uh, factors, right? So if, you know, like I was coming to the studio, you were already here, you waved at me because I was coming from this, you saw me through the window, you saw also the sunset, you know, and all this kind of, we share this environment together. Um, and and that, that already brings, that is a different take of what we see others are doing, uh, which is fine, but we are trying to really, so like, and you should, you should visit one of our Saturday disco nights because, the experience we are getting while dancing inside, for example, a 360 video bubble in the disco club together with live music streaming to us at the same time and, you know, having all this, 
it's quite magical. Like it's not, you yeah. know, it's 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 pretty magical. And we had concerts here as well, where the singer is in VR playing the guitar, and we yeah. are, you know, 50, 60 people uh, experiencing this together. It definitely is the future in some terms. And I think that's what you you are saying is that the brain likes to smoothen things out. And I think that's why VR. Uh, we don't. I think we don't even realize the full potential of, of VR yet. I think VR has such yeah. a profound impact on our brains that we don't yet understand how this could be used. And VR, VR is about to make a corner turn uh, next year. Next year, we're going to get 4K uh, screens, which are uh, the early reviews of these screens is it really changes uh, your experience. I mean, I, I'm looking out and I'm seeing the windows and I'm seeing a lot of jitter on the windows, yep. right? And a lot of jaggedy edges and I'm seeing a screen door effect. It just ruins. Uh, the you are on DK1, right? Uh, or you're, you're, you're on Oculus yeah. DK1. Okay. Uh, I'm on the original. Oculus, original Oculus. Not okay. DK1, okay. Not DK. Actual, original Oculus. Original okay. One. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. I mean, I, it, you know, as a start, this is great, but it's, it's a big black thing on your head. It's fairly heavy, right? It, yeah. It, you wear it for three hours, your nose starts hurting. My face is sort of getting tired of yep. having this on. I mean, I can only wear it for an hour before I start going, you know, I, I need to get back into the real world. Right. Right. And the devices coming next year are going to be lighter weight and they're going to have much sharper optics, much better color, um, much less of the screen door effect. It's going to be harder to see the individual pixels on your screens. Yeah. Right. And we're getting better infrastructure. Our, our you know, our, our GPUs are getting better than the one I bought. I have a 1080 GPU. Uh, you, you look I'm 2070. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and NVIDIA next year will have another one. Right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's Moore's Law. It still is going. And we're starting to get 5G. We're starting to get fiber. My, more and more of my friends are getting fiber. You know, so you've taken another two years. More friends have fiber. More friends have better GPUs. More friends have VR because VR is more affordable yep. or just more attractive to people. So I think next the next 18 months are going to be real interesting. You're going to start to see w where the future is going. And these eyeglasses um, might be um, really interesting for me because I have to wear – I'm wearing eyeglasses inside my VR headset just to see you, right, to correct my vision. And – I w will still need those, you know, in, in the future. Yeah. And I need those to, to walk around the shopping mall or, you know, go around the real world. And Apple is going to aim at those. That That's what I'm hearing from inside Apple is Apple is going after eyeglasses and trying to make eyeglasses better. And if they do that, that they'll, they'll be quite po popular, but they might not have this wide field of view they might not have as many pixels to play with right so people like you and i who like to be immersed in in somnium space and really enjoy the visuality of this place uh probably will have for a while two devices at minimum yeah and of course I, yeah I, might, I agree i might have different vr devices for different things i mean i the I have five. Is a good example. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a Vive, I have a Rift, I have two Oculus Quests, and now I'm getting yeah. an HP that's coming out. And yeah. I hear there's an Oculus, a new Oculus Quest coming next year. So we'll have, I'll, I'll catch up to you pretty soon. All right. <laughs> I'm not stopping though. <laughs> so, <laughs> anytime soon as well. Yeah, I Re Reverb 2 is a, is a great device I hear as well. So I'm ordering that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so. There, there's a lot of new devices coming and that'll bring more new people into the community because this community needs to grow for businesses to be sustainable. Yeah. Right? I, 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 selling a, I don't know how many quests have sold almost a million, right? Selling a million units it sounds nice, but when you compare it to a phone, Apple sells 200 million phones a quarter, right? Yeah. And, so you need to get over 10 million sold just to get Hollywood excited and get some of the, the AAA movie studios and game studios to build content for you. And it, it really, it, you know, will help your business grow as well when the numbers start to grow. Like, yeah. And I, I mean, the, the next 24 months will tell us 
you know, how fast is this industry really going to grow? Because it, now we're on an exponential uh, growth curve. And uh, yeah, a lot of yeah. fun stuff coming. A lot of, and I think the future of Hollywood as well, par par partially is, uh, you know, what we're doing here, a live production of the show uh, with tools, yeah. like all digital tools, everything live. Uh, that's the beginning of what Hollywood is also definitely looking at and, and, and thinking like how, and we're, they're using already VR yeah. in some per parts of the movies uh, to, to, to build a set and to, to walk through the set. But like, this is live production, you know, without any, you know, cuts or without any, any things. We're just doing it I, live and recording it, which is, which is pretty amazing. For I Hollywood see this well. more, I, I think this is sort of boring TV. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm honored you had me on, but I can't wait until we can actually do stuff together you know like build a barn or you know oh that's coming pretty disco. soon and yeah yeah dancing in it or, yeah. or build new things for the disco audience together right maybe even video edit or take a 3d we're object. we're doing it already and, we're doing it already so people yeah. can build discos on this uh within 15 minutes deploy and within five minutes everyone can come in um, and, and enjoy that like this is one of the examples or yeah. art galleries like this is happening already and artists are doing some amazing stuff here because we have 360 artists who are putting 360 pictures and videos in the bubbles and we have portals here and so, on, so you can walk inside the 360 art and be immersed in that and this just feels together so you can watch a 360 yeah. movie together while uh while while being inside that so that's already well it's already happening and it, it, i gotta it, it, i gotta uh, bring some of my 360 stuff in because i uh i have a 360 video of the sistine chapel right and oh do it fun yeah to put that down here yeah. somewhere yeah. yeah you can even live stream yeah. 360 video into the somnium and walk into this live stream so what i did one time yeah. is i live stream from my kitchen and that's cool. uh, and, and and i walked into my kitchen in vr within Somnium while I was live streaming with my Gear 360 from the kitchen. It was like, I was seeing myself walking inside the kitchen. I was like, okay, that's, that's even for me too much. You know, like, like this, this is, I'm in VR entering in 360 stream. I'm immersed in this 360. I'm in my kitchen in VR while being in real time in real life in VR, which is uh, pretty, pretty amazing. It's still the early days, that, but uh, it, it, it's, it's amazing. That shows sort of a hint of wh what I was talking about when you, when you get digital, you get new capabilities that just are pretty mind blowing and capabilities of distributing and having shared experience yeah. um, that we just can't do in a, in a real in life. The analog real world. Yeah. Right. And it's pretty exciting. All right. But what else can we talk about? I mean, I, I have, in, we could talk for hours about old stories of, Uber was invented right in front of me in, in a Paris snowstorm. Right? Uh, so you, I, you promised me that. to tell about uh, t uh, testing Windows 95 uh, uh, on the modem. Uh, how, how, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that uh, briefly, if, if you can. Yeah, I worked at a I worked at a computer programming magazine in the 90s called uh, Visual Basic Programmers Journal, and before that, it was Basic Pro. Here's a here's a trivia question: What was Microsoft's first product? Ooh. Uh, I don't know. It, and I for me it was Windows. Uh, for, 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 for me it was no. Windows. <laughs> it was it was Basic. Microsoft's first product was uh, the Basic uh, compiler for um, the early personal computers. And and by the way, Bill Gates never thought he wanted to build operating systems, right? He told IBM, and so IBM, and so Apple comes out with the Apple II in '77, right? And IBM quickly figured out that they were at risk of being really disrupted by this new industry of personal computer, that they were losing, uh, that they were just missing out on a, on a new world that was being built, right? And so they built a, a Skunk Works project. IBM back then was big mainframes, yeah. right? And, and, and many computers, big computers that were in uh, offices, right, and, and government. And Apple II started getting taken to work, sort of like the iPhone got took to work and killed Nokia, right? But IBM uh, didn't have an operating system for this personal computer. The, the personal computer that they built was built with uh, very low cost uh, uh, components, was mm -hmm. built with mostly open <clears throat> components, CPUs that were on right, the right, open right. market yeah. and memory that was on the open market, right? 
but they didn't have an operating system. So they went to Bill Gates and said, hey, we're, you know, we're building this personal computer. We want you to be, build the basic compiler for it, but we need an operating system. What, what, how can we solve this problem? And Bill told him, go to DRI Research down in California, <laughs> you know, near Monterey, California. And they did that twice. Bill told them twice. And um, I heard the story um, from the CTO at DRI Research who worked for Gary Kildall. So Gary Kildall uh, uh, built CPM, which was the number one operating system of the late 70s, uh, right, late 1970s. And I asked him, how did you screw this up? <laughs> how did you... <laughs> How did you how did you have the deal of the century in your hands and screw it up? And he goes, you got to understand, we were running an, a business with thousands of customers who were paying a thousand dollars for our operating system each or more, right? And IBM comes to us and says we need the operating system for twenty five dollars, and they just couldn't figure out how to fire all their customers and say, you got to go away because we're going to serve IBM. Right. Couldn't figure out how to make that work. And that's why they said, we we can't do a deal. Hmm. And so IBM went back to Bill Gates and Bill Gates then said, shit, I need to make something happen. I, and he started looking around. He found a copy of CPM uh, done by Tim Patterson at Seattle Computer Works and bought it for $50,000. Oh, wow. And it was a, a fairly straightforward copy of, of uh, CPM called DOS, right? And the genius that Bill had, his dad was a lawyer, and they wrote the contract with IBM so that he could sell DOS to other companies. And that he didn't make any money on the IBM deal, but he made all the money on Dell and Compaq and selling it everywhere else. And that's why Microsoft is Microsoft today, because he didn't have existing customers. And it's sort of like Tesla, back to Tesla. I asked uh, General Motors, when are you gonna ship an electric car that doesn't have any knobs on the dashboard and, and forces your customers to use a phone as a key and uh, has an NVIDIA card in the glove compartment with an always uh, up, uploading and downloading computer, a neural network. And they look at me very strange. And they're like, you have no clue of how the auto business works. And I go, no, I actually have a pretty good clue of the trouble you're in. Yeah. Because Elon Musk doesn't have customers. And he can do whatever the hell he wants exactly. with a new car. Yeah. And you guys can't because you're selling to existing customers. And they actually told me, go, Ford told me, go do a focus group and, and talk to real customers. Get out of Silicon Valley. Talk to a real Ford customer. And ask them these questions, you know. And I did. I I sat with a farmer in a hot spring in Colorado and asked him, like, "All right, um, are you ready to buy an electric truck?" <laughs> and he was like, "Well, I, that I might get to. I, uh, yeah, I think I could be sold on that as long as it's uh, I can charge it everywhere. Yeah, you could put a solar panel on your farm and charge for free. Yeah, get free a Saudi Audi, uh, Audi a Saudi uh, oil, right? So." I think the electric part is pretty sellable in America. Although uh, there's still resistance, right? There's still people, oh, oh a, I've, a car has to have a car, gas. I mean, I, don't I have know. friends who are yeah, telling right. me that electric cars are a uh, dead and not the future, even though I'm driving one for six years happily uh, and across all you yeah. know European countries. Uh, but they still tell me oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it will yeah. not work. I'm like, okay, yeah. I don't know. It a, works. <laughs> a real car makes us. I, I have friends like this too who have Porsches, you know, and I'm right, like, right, my right. car is way better than any Porsche. Yeah. What are you talking about? I, my Porsche makes a sound. You know, yeah, exactly. Sings to me. It's like, it's like um, my my Tesla lets me uh, have a Zoom call in a freeway. You yeah. Know? What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like, it's like what? We, but anyways, we, we had that argument. But then we, we then I asked the guy, the farmer. I go, all right, let's talk about the dash. What if uh, your Ford truck came with no knobs on the dash and had a big computer like a Tesla, right? And there he's like. I'm not a computer guy. I hate computers. I don't want to touch a computer. I like knobs. I like to feel things. I like to, to turn things. I like to know where my AM radio is and how to get to my AM radio station, right? Yeah, that's... And existing customer is resistant 
to change, right? And then I ask, uh, ask him, and my dad was like this. I ask, ask him, uh, all right, what about a uh, phone? Would you use your phone as the key to your truck? So when you get close to the truck, the truck un unlocks and stuff like that. Uh, son, uh, did you see I'm not a computer guy? I don't even have an iPhone. I have a flip phone because I hate phones. I, don't, I hate computers. Oh, yeah. That's a hard one to get over. Right? Yeah. And then uh, the real problem is I, I think I could sell that, but, you know, pull them into the modern world, right? Uh, the real problem is um, are you willing to pay uh, $6,000 to put cameras and a neural network on your truck? So you can sell <laughs> Why would I need that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, I don't try. I, I, I've been doing a lot of research on self driving cars, right? And I ask people, are you ready to get in a car without a steering wheel, right? And even I'm not ready to do that because I, I know the state of the art is not there. Yeah. Uh, Waymo is pretty close in some neighborhoods, right? Some places, right? It's still limited, Phoenix, yeah. Arizona. It's, still limited, not, yeah. it's limited to a certain place that's been scanned in 3D. And um, so I asked normal people, are you, are you ready to get in a car without a steering wheel? And they're like, fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one guy told me, I'm a narcissistic control freak. And there's no fucking way I'm going to let a computer drive me around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, you know, that's, 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 some, that's just by DNA. Companies rarely reinvent themselves several times and 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 for yeah. i had meetings with uh you know i've been in ev charging business uh and and yeah. and i had meetings with uh with some uh, um, high-end managers and ceos of of german automotive companies and they loved a tesla and i said guys i can understand you love your cars better than anything else in the world it's fine but please Pay some attention. That was five years ago. Okay, where we are now. So, uh, you know, Tesla is selling more yeah. premium cars in Germany uh, than some of the German auto brands. So they, they are number two or number one even uh, at some months. So they can't react. No, I, I no. talked to Mercedes about this. I, they can't react. And, and they can't react because they have existing customers around the world, right? And it's the existing customer problem that is real, real interesting, you know. And, you know, you start... Looking at even like Facebook, we talked about Facebook. Can Facebook build this? Yeah, they could build this in 10 minutes, right? I mean, you know, they have enough programmers who are brilliant. We're all waiting for Horizon. The world, right? Hey, <laughs> where's the Horizon? Yeah. And that's the problem is yep. you're, when you're in a big company, and I've worked in a couple of big companies, you're in committees and trying to, trying to get... Uh, an executive at Facebook to see the promise of this yeah, kind of yeah, thing is yeah, really yeah. hard. Tell them blockchain um, thing I, and I, stuff and they will fade out. Uh, no, I, even stuff that's already happened. I told Bill Gates to buy Skype before eBay did and not listening to me cost him $6 billion because he eventually did buy it. Yeah. He just bought it for $8 billion. <laughs> um, and I told him to do a whole bunch of other things on an email. And then the answer I got back with, uh, was from Steven Sanofsky, who's now the venture capitalist at at uh, Andreessen Horowitz, and it had the words business value 13 times. In other words, when, when you're building an exponentially uh, interesting thing, and this is exponentially, right? Every, every month you get more users in here, every month you sell more land, every month you know, things you know, get better, yep. right? And new features show up and new things happen, right? It's, it's growing exponentially. But expon exponents suck for the first 20 times, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But my favorite question is, would you rather have a penny that doubles every day for a month or a uh, million dollars, right? Yeah. Well, if you don't live 27 days, take the million dollars and have a party, right? Exponents start out with one penny, then two penny on the second day, then four penny on the third day, and then eight penny on the fourth day, right? And it goes real slow for a while. And then all of a sudden, the exponents start getting interesting around day 20, flip 20, right? Yeah. They start going from $1,000 to $2,000 to $4,000 to $8,000. And that's when the big companies pay attention. Because when, when it starts getting to day 20, but if you're building an exponential technology like a Tesla car is, you're you have to go 20, through the pain. Yeah, you're, you're ahead 20, 20 flips, and 
big company employees don't understand you have to go through each of the flips yeah. to get to there, right? You can't just copy this and have everybody show up. Yeah. You, you're you're going to have a brand and a, an experience built before they even react to it. Yeah. And then they have their business models to protect, like they have advertising. You don't have any advertising. Yeah. Yet. No baggage with us. Yeah. And we can. Uh, no we can baggage. Just... No. No existing customers. So I, I look at innovators like you, and I like. I am real interested in this. <laughs> you know? yeah. So congrats, congrats! But now you have to flip the penny a couple more times. You know, flipping, maybe, flipping. Maybe, <laughs> We're flipping. Maybe twenty more times. You know, before uh, you get you get enough of an audience that makes. Hey, we last year we had a we had a Indigo campaign selling few land parcels yeah. for sixty thousand, and we had a campaign for two hundred thousand. And this year, in uh, in 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 ten weeks, we we raised uh, half a million. So I mean, it's it's exactly. and and people are bra building amazing things. The most amazing thing is like what people are creating on those things because yeah. you know money is one thing, but like seeing the experiences people are no. doing. That's and, that's and that's what's not copyable. I I don't care about the money. The community. It, it, when I worked at Microsoft, uh, Dig was really popular. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah Dig, I do. Right, mm -hmm. and. Uh, a, uh, a programmer that there said, "Oh, I could copy Dig in a week." I go, "You're clueless." Yeah, you're clueless. Yes, you could copy th the form of Dig and the algorithms, but you can't get the community. Yeah, and your challenge is to build algorithm and community at the same time so that both uh, become interesting. But once once you get the community, that's a moat around your business that's not going to go away as long as you don't piss off your community. You know, and happens sometimes, and uh, <laughs> but it does. So you got to be careful of that, and and um, you got to feed the community and bring different kinds of people in here to get people to understand the the vibrant vibrantness of this uh, community. It's really cool. Yeah. So it's going to be fun to watch uh, watch this world. But yeah, you know, uh, I guess the lesson is I've been around and, you know, being old, you see these winners and losers over time and you see how people fuck up big things and uh, and you get some wisdom of that. It, you know, uh, I've done the same thing with my life. I've fucked up things and won a few things, right? And so you start getting some wisdom about what, what is good and what's not. And so you can have a conversation about it and, and then, you know, uh, watch where things are going to be going in the future. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be a fun uh, decade. It's uh, it's going to be a hard decade in a whole lot of levels, but as always, I mean, I, a friend of mine, I was talking, you know, retail stores and restaurants are closing at a pretty fast rate in America and then probably around the world. Yeah. Um, uh, in San Antonio, Texas, it's predicted 30% of the restaurants won't reopen. So we're seeing a decrease in value of physicality of going to physical things and an increase in value in virtuality. And I think you're uh, one of the leaders there. So it's really exciting to be here. And Thank you. And it's it's, you it's incredible to, it's, for me, it's it's surreal to, 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 to sit with you here. I've been your fan for a long time and I've, you know, I've listened to you to being Thank on you. Tweet, for example. Uh, you know, I've read the books from Jason Calacanis and I, li I love uh, Lola Porter. I've, I've read your blog. So like for, for for, for me, sitting here with you and talking in VR, you know, about things we discuss and, and, and stuff, that's just incredible. So, yeah, I... I well, it's I, been my life goal to have the first, uh, you know, first row seat on the future. And this is this is the future. So thank you. Yeah, I'm here again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. So I think I think with this, we, we, we could conclude this episode. Uh, I would like to thank you again for 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 coming uh today to this show uh it's it was an incredible talk and we can continue and go on and on and perhaps uh, uh, uh i'll yeah, you you'll, you'll uh, accept our invitation one more time yeah we, we can we can we can repeat uh some we haven't point even talked about instagram i was the 79th user of instagram ah okay Actually, next time let's next... tell that story okay let's tell the let's story tell all right story. all right tell the story one more story because bonus stuff well because um uh it's a, it's yet another one of these entrepreneurial stories that people don't understand the future even when it's in front of them, right? 
um, I was talking to a group of Irish entrepreneurs who were in Silicon Valley to understand the Silicon Valley way and innovation and all mm -hmm. that, right? And these were people who had already built huge businesses, uh, factories, retail stores, uh, wine owned 50 McDonald's restaurants, stuff like that, right? In other words, people who were wealthy, educated, knowledgeable, people who built things that were important, right? All that. And I stood up and said, um, this morning, Mark Zuckerberg bought this little company called Instagram for a billion dollars. This was the day he bought it. And I said, I think that's the best purchase the Silicon Valley has ever made. And I think in, in history, it'll prove to be the most profitable. And I said, if anybody agrees with what I just said, please hold up your hand. And this was 40 people. Not a Zero. single hand. Not a single hand. Yeah. Zero. Because, and, and then they started arguing with me. And they said, one guy said, oh, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. They don't have any employees. They don't have any sales. They don't have any revenues. Um, they don't have any assets, right? And if you look at the world that they were in, Right. And these these were people who had 10,000 employees and had factories and had stores right. and had assets and had physicality. Right. And here was a thing that came along that had no no physicality, you had 14 employees. Right. No sales, no revenues, no profits. How is that worth a billion dollars? Just couldn't wrap their head around it. Right. I knew uh, by talking to. Um, advertising executives like I, I had dinner with uh, the craft food ex advertising team one time and they told me I, I, I asked them you know what, what do you get for your money how, how do you know that you're getting something for your money he goes oh we spend $34 to convince somebody to eat our cheese mm -hmm. for a lifetime right and over a lifetime they'll spend thousands of dollars on craft cheese right Nestle chocolate does the same thing. Yep. Right. And I was like, thirty-four dollars. That's interesting. Well, when when Zuckerberg bought WhatsApp, right, everybody was incredulous about the huge number. It's like nineteen billion dollars. How did? Yeah. How is that worth? I was I was surprised as well. Yeah, I was like, what the heck? So but I... but their customer act was per customer that big figure came out to nineteen dollars. I said, shit, this man is brilliant. He's going to buy something for $19 a person and sell it to advertisers for $34 a person forever. <laughs> right? and, yeah, and, that's true. And, and that's how it worked out, right? And so I knew that having an audience was worth you know, $34 a person. And in fact, if, if you look at how much somebody's worth on Twitter, Twitter's worth $78 a person, right? And, and so buying people in terms of audience size, even though there was no business around it, was very valuable. And that's why I knew it was going to be very valuable because Instagram was growing exponentially. And I knew that from the first day when I tried it, when the, when uh, um, Mark and uh, who was the other guy, they showed it to me at a, at, they, they, they built their company on a little cop, uh, on a little picnic table at a yeah I, um, I watched I, I accelerator listened to, at yeah. the pier I listened to their story yeah. on how I built this podcast and uh, yeah it was amazing listening yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's and so uh, they put it on my phone and I took a picture and I, there was only 78 people on the thing and I got three comments in less than a minute I was like oh this is really fun and really addictive and uh, I'm gonna keep using it right and sure enough the numbers just when they launched they they went you know 100,000 users yeah their users servers went down like weeks. several times yeah exactly exactly yeah and they had a great product um and so it, it's a lesson to you you know that your friends might not understand what this is but they will someday oh i started this at like idea <laughs> game, idea game at 216 like can you imagine me explaining to people? That's why I had to finance the whole thing from myself from the beginning. Because explaining yeah. to someone in Europe, uh, not in Silicon Valley, in Europe, that someday there will be people inside virtual world like Somnium Space buying and selling things with blockchain 
in VR, yeah. people, even today, when we speak to people, they fade out. I lose them. I see it in their eyes. that I, They're gone. In their mind, yeah. they're gone to me. You know, they, they, they don't listen anymore. They are somewhere out there. And that's that's even in 2020. They still right. don't. I mean, you had Charlie Fink on yesterday. We, him and I had an argument. He's like, there's nothing to do there. and There's no people. I'm like, don't pay attention to that. <laughs> look at look at the potential of this new thing and where it's going to go over the next five ten years and this is really exciting because of a whole number of things like like how you sell plots of land on ethereum right yeah so it's really it's... really exciting i'm real honored to be here and thank you thank you for honor on my side of the community here for a long time thank you um so yeah uh Thanks again for, for being with us today. Uh, I've, I've, I had a lot of fun and uh, I hope the audience uh, as well. And um, yeah, I hope to have you uh, sometimes back uh, in the future. I hope you'll accept the invitation. We can discuss and come back to some topics which we discussed today and see how we actually did uh, yeah. if, we, if we predicted things well. And yeah, so don't forget to, uh, to subscribe. Well, the, the book lays it out. Our book, The Infinite Retina, lays it out very well and it's available. Yes, yeah, so go buy the book. Uh, Amazon everywhere, people can buy that, right? Uh, hardcover, digital. So you go and buy the book, please. Um, and of course, don't forget, I have to say that, don't forget to subscribe, like, retweet, whatever you have to do in social world right now. Just tweet this thing and uh, share it with your friends. And until next time, goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.